refrigerant 134A is the working fluid of a Carnot vapor refrigeration cycle. The evaporator temperature is negative 12. So this TL, negative 12 degrees C. Saturated vapor enters the condenser at 34 C. So TH is 34 C. Saturated liquid exits the condenser at the same temperature. So saturated vapor, saturated liquid. The mass flow rate is M dot equal to 5 kilograms per 60 seconds. So 5 kilograms per minute. Determine the rate of heat transfer to the refrigerant passing through the evaporator. Now, they want it in kilowatts, and it's a rate of heat transfer, so we're asking this all for Q dot in the evaporator, it's Q dot L, or Q dot E. That would be the product of the mass flow rate times, from an energy balance around the evaporator, the mass flow rate times enthalpy 1 minus enthalpy 4. True? So we need to get those enthalpies. How about the net power into the cycle? So that would be W dot net, which is W dot that is needed to drive the compressor minus what is the turbine produces, which is mass flow rate times H2 minus H1 for the compressor minus H3 um, minus H4 for the turbine. So we need the enthalpies to get the answer for part B. The mass flow rate's already given. And then the coefficient of performance, the COP, for the refrigeration. And you can put Carnot refrigeration. It makes a little long subscript, but it's, it's clear what we're getting. Uh, we're looking for the coefficient of performance is equal to what you desire, a large cooling, Q dot L, divided by what it, the net cost, W dot net. And what you'll find is that you can calculate the enthalpies, calculate the answer to part A and B, to perform the ratio and get the answer to part C. But then you also remember from Thermo 1 that isn't the Carnot efficiency equal to TL divided by TH minus TL as long as the temperatures are in absolute and you can solve that using the other equation and you'll get exactly the same answer good to three digits and depending how you do it you may even get four all right because there is property evaluations and the tables don't have infinite number of digits so a good strategy is go ahead and make a table of uh, the state go ahead and put the pressure maybe kilopascal or bar some unit Temperature, degrees C or Kelvin, enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram, and the entropy kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin. And because quality describes a lot of the states, you can you also put quality in there. And let's go ahead and put in, fill up this table for state one, state two, state three, and state four. So I recommend a, a clear illustration like this. A property diagram, TS, and a table for properties to help organize your work. So at uh, state one, it has a temperature of negative 12 degrees C, true. And it, we have an unknown quality, unknown entropy, and unknown enthalpy. That's a comma on that enthalpy. But it, it's like a comma with the units, comma with the units, comma with the units, comma with the units. Okay. So to get state one fixed, you can get the saturation pressure. So PSAT at negative 12, you look up in the table, it's 185.4 kilopascal or 1.854 bar. But to get the, you look back at state two, you know state two is saturated vapor. And so you can look up the temperature, well, it's given to you, it's 34 degrees C. You look up the corresponding pressure, 800 
62.5 bar or kilopascal. And then you can look up this H, which is H of F, true? And S of F, and its quality is one. It's saturated vapor. Did I say F or G? I misspoke if I said subscript F. This is H of G, saturated vapor, and A S of G, true? Yes. Where'd you get the first P from? Uh, it's the saturation pressure at 30, negative 12 as well as 34 degrees C okay. in the property tables because they're, they're two phase. Yeah. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, write those values down from state two. The entropy is 0 0.9058. And the enthalpy is 260. 5.45. Now I can go back and work on state 1 because it's constant S. So the value of S1 is equal to the value of S2. So it's 0 0.9058. Now I can get the quality at state 1. The quality at state 1 based on S is equal to S minus S of F divided by SG minus S of F. How many people... Follow that logic. Good? And so I can look up or calculate the quality at state 1. And it's high. It's 0.9735. So it's 97% vapor by mass or by volume? By mass. By mass, right? And it's uh, whatever it is left over is by... by uh, by mass is in the liquid phase. So it's almost all vapor. And then we get the, va the enthalpy at state 1. How do we get enthalpy at 1? Is that H of F plus quality at 1, H of FG? And so you get that this is 234.7. You come down now to state 3. Oh, that's saturated liquid, true. So that's 34, same pressure, 862.5. Quality is zero, saturated liquid. I look up, this is going to be H of F and S of F. So I draw those straight out of the tables. When I draw those out of the tables, I find that it's 0.3584 and 97.31. It's isentropic through that turbine from state 3 to 4. So it's 0.3584. The pressure drops down to the 185.4. It has negative 12 degrees C. It's two phase. I look up the quality. X4 is equal to, just like this equation right here, for X1, X4 is equal to S minus S of F divided by SG minus S of F, true. And so we get the quality at state 1 to be 0.2787, just a little under 30%. And then get the enthalpy at state 4, 91.74. So get the property values, be able to calculate them all, and then go back and calculate then what is this um, Q dot L. And it's around 11.9 kilowatts. That's the rate of cooling in the evaporator. W dot net, using this equation, is around 2.10 kilowatts. And this is you know, showing you that it takes less electric power to move a lot of heat. So that's, uh, you know, you took 2.1 kilowatts of electric power and you prov provided around 12 kilowatts of cooling at that temperature. And then the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle is 5.68. Good to three digits, either using the ratio here, we're going back to the temperatures.